Welcome to the Grim Leftovers Show with Grimnir every Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern on reallibertymedia.com and rlmradio.xyz. That's right, folks. It is time for another episode of the Grim Leftovers program. This is episode 28, and we are now in the 26th week of 2019. That means we're basically halfway... What the hell's going on there? We're basically halfway through the uh, year here. Uh, Don't mind me, I was just seeing some message pop up that looked wrong, but I I realized what it was, so never mind. (laughs) So yeah, we're basically halfway through the year now. Or we will be at the end of this week, the end of this month, uh, which comes up on uh, Monday is the 1st of July. The 30th is on Sunday, meaning that is halfway through 2019. So uh, anyway, welcome to the show. Uh, Glad you are here uh, with us this evening on the Grim Leftovers program, live on reallibertymedia.com rlmradio.xyz reallibertyorg but not today today not on freedomsnetwork.com because the domain for freedomsnetwork.com has expired and I haven't figured out who I'm supposed to contact yet in order to get that re-upped if, if it's going to be re-upped if it doesn't get re-upped I guess I'm okay with that too uh, so uh, anyway whatever um, freedomsnetwork.com is down, has been down since uh, probably late last night sometime. I don't know. It said it expired on the 24th, so, eh. Uh, I, I, I assume somebody will renew that domain. I assume. I contacted some people. <laughs> I talked to a man about a sign, as this saying goes. Anyway, if you're not over here in the chat on irc.freedo.net via either the realliberty.com homepage or uh, rlmradio.xyz or through your own client, uh, wherever that may be, come on over, jump on in. It's pound pound Real Liberty Media on irc.freedo.net. So uh, come on, say hi, say hi. All right, we can talk to all the great folks that are here today, all the people that are in the chat, Barman and myself, of course, the Mighty Moose Girl in D.C. and Asmo, Mr. Chal Sedoni, Graham Z, you out there, you awake, you out gar- gardening, farming, and uh, yeah, we got another Don Z there too, uh, Java Doctor and Meister Brow in the Ponder Gander, a.k.a. Vin E., uh, Miss Kate in uh, Rob Works, passing the, passing the bubbler around. Good man, Robert. Uh, we got uh, Rome's, a.k.a. Trust No One. The Vanna White Bot. The Weather Dork Bot. The Phantom, not a bot. Mr. Beetle. Yeah, Freedom's Network, a.k.a. Estrella's Blog. I, 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 you know, I did it, used it a good amount, too, and Hal always uses it. So uh, other people do, besides her. Um <laughs> Nobody, nobody uh, gets into the extremeness that she gets into, but yeah. Uh, we got the Cyborg Noodle and Frumpy and Goober Zilla. We got Gromit and Huh? Uh, and JJ's uh, Sock Puppet and Smartass. Yeah, yeah, I know, Rob. The, a, a domain renewal is really cheap, but right now it's being held uh, by um, a company, Bluehost, that I don't have login information for. Uh, so I can't get in there and renew it. Somebody else has that information. Somebody else owns that account. So is the site important? Beetle asks. Eh, eh. <laughs> eh I guess that all depends on your point of view. <laughs> I think it's redundant. Actually, I do believe that Freedoms Network is redundant now that we have WorldTruth.org. I mean, uh, realliberty.org. <laughs> Duh. Yeah, realliberty.org. I, I think they're basically, a, you know, you could use you could use realliberty.org rather than freedomsnetwork.com. And that would be great. That'd be great to me. Uh, anyway, so uh, hooray for all that. Um, 
Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to get into the stories. I had some personal notes to tell you about things going on around the land of Moriarty, New Mexico, and myself, my home. But none of those are really, they, they, they don't matter. So let's just get into the stories. I got a bunch of stories lined up here for you, as I do every single week. And the first one we're going to start off with here is posted on thehackernews.com on May 17th here. Report reveals Team Viewer, Team Viewer, the application, the desktop sharing application, was breached by Chinese hackers in 2016. What? Why are we just hearing about this now? It was breached in 2016. The German software company behind TeamViewer, one of the most popular software in the world that allows users to access and share desktops remotely, was reportedly compromised in 2016. The German newspaper Der Spiegel revealed that day. Uh, TeamViewer is a popular popular remote support software that allows you or me or anybody else to securely share your desktop or take full control of other other people's PCs over the internet from anywhere in the world with millions of users making use of its service team viewer has always been a target of interest for attackers according to the publication the cyber attack was launched by hackers with Chinese origin, or at least using Chinese IPs, who used WinNTI Trojan malware, uh, activities of which have been, uh, which have previously been linked to the Chinese state intelligence system. So they're saying it's state level hacking. Active since at least 2010, WinNTI Advanced Persistent Threat APT group has previously launched a series of financial attacks against software and gaming organizations primarily in the U.S. of A., Japan, and South Korea. Uh, The group is known for using supply chain attacks by interacting or infecting, excuse me, legitimate software or servers with malicious updates to install malware on your system. Uh, once infected, WinNTI downloads a backdoor payload on the compromised computer, giving attackers the ability to remotely control the victim's computers without their knowledge. Der Spiegel criticized Team Viewer Company for not disclosing the intrusion to the public to inform its customers. Yeah, I'm kind of... Uh, criticizing them for doing that as well, or not doing that, as the case may be. However, when the Hacker News contacted the company, Team Viewer said it discovered the cyber attack in time, soon after detecting suspicious activities, and took immediate action. Right. (laughs) To prevent any major damage. Now, let me just tell you this. I, for many years now, I, for many years, was a huge proponent of TeamViewer. I love TeamViewer. I never used it for any business purposes whatsoever. Nobody pays me to jump on their computer and try and troubleshoot their issues. Which is perfectly fine under their terms of service, TOS, for a private user. However, a couple months ago, I received an email from them saying they thought that my activity on TeamViewer was suspicious and they thought I might be using it for business applications and to send them uh, information uh, uh, about the fact that I wasn't using it for business purposes. So I did. I didn't hear anything back from them. They didn't reply to my response to them. And then about a month and a half later, I get another letter from them, basically the same thing, saying they thought I was being suspicious on Team Viewer. So I said, screw it. And uh, I I located another uh, desktop sharing program 
thank you, Romes, for pointing out that program to me. And that, that other program is called AnyDesk. Now, AnyDesk also has uh, similar terms of service. But the thing is, I, I think TeamViewer is growing too large. They're becoming one of the evil corporations out there. And I, I, don't, I don't trust TeamViewer anymore. And so I, I uninstalled TeamViewer from all of my systems because screw them. They're going to they start accusing me of doing something and then ask me for a reply and I reply and they don't call me back. Up yours. <laughs> anyway, I like any desk better, actually. It seems to be faster. Uh, the, the connections, the response time on the, on the remote screens, uh, things along those lines. And you can go to anydesk.com and grab it for yourself. And, and I, I mean, it was really easy for me to get people to set up any desk on their machines, um, all the people that I help. So uh, I was quite glad uh, to to get this this application, different application. I don't know how old it is, uh, but um, yeah, that that's that's it, man. Uh, AnyDesk.com right there. Uh, fast remote desktop application, and it is faster as, as far as I could tell. As I said, so uh, if you're using TeamViewer, um, check it out. Check it out. Check out AnyDesk because uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, Romans pointed it out to me, and it's really easy. To not just not only to connect to other people's computers, um, uh, but but also to save their accounts. Yeah, so um, <laughs> thanks, suck. I, I like prawn. <laughs> sock says he's uh, connecting to my remoting into my my desktop to share this porn. So yeah, sweet. <laughs> All right, all right. <laughs> okay, next story here. <laughs> this is on thefreethoughtproject.com. Truckers face years in prison for transporting legal hemp because of cops, quote, just doing their jobs, unquote. Oh, a dog coin wallet update. Well, that's been like five years coming. Thanks, thanks, Rooms. Um, all right. So, uh, so yeah, truckers. Le I, did I cover this? I probably covered this story already, but maybe from a different angle. Um, doggy do one point one four. Sweet. All right. Several truckers were arrested and are forcing or facing years in prison for carrying entirely legal hemp because the police state addicted cops are just doing their jobs. Yep, because government is the antithesis to freedom, industrial hemp has been banned nationwide since 1937, ostensibly due to the plant's similarities to marijuana. Now, we know there's other, many other reasons involved. Oil, paper, textiles, plastics, all, all kinds of various stuff that you can use hemp for. Uh, that is behind the banning of hemp at that level, or was, excuse me. Uh, many have speculated that this move was also due to the fact that cannabis is in direct comp competition with the pharmaceutical industry, which indeed it is, by providing a safer alternative uh, to treatments as well as directly competing with the petrochemical industry. However, all this changed in December after the Trumpster signed the Agricultural Improvement Act of 2018, legalizing industrial hemp on a national scale. But thanks to a police state dependent on locking you up in a cage for a plant, three truckers in Idaho are facing down horrific prison sentences for carrying it. Right, I covered a similar story, uh, I think, uh, uh, about a different angle of this of this uh, last week or the week before. Anyway, Andrew Daddario, a a Eric Einshart, and Dennis Palamarchek, you guys have some tough names, have all been arrested in Idaho for transporting this incredibly beneficial textile crop that cannot get you high. Thanks to cops who are 
just doing their jobs. Eisenhart and Diodario are scheduled to be sentenced next month after being found guilty of transporting the plant. Uh, Palarmchuk is due in court in October. In Palarmchuk's case, police falsely claimed that the nearly 7,000 pounds of hemp in his truck was marijuana. Only after police broke the, uh, broke the same law they arrested him for by transporting the plant across state lines for testing, did they realize it was actually hemp. With all the federal eyes looking at the Idaho case, what's interesting is that the state shipped the product to Kentucky to be tested, observed Bo Whitney, a senior economist with New Frontier Data, a cannabis intelligence firm. I don't know how they got it there, but I found it really fascinating. Despite the federal government ending prohibition of the hemp plant last year, Backwards police state addicted politicians in states like Idaho continue to kidnap and cage people for it. It's absolutely horrific, said Idaho Representative e Ilana Rubel, I guess, uh, a legislator who is working to get the charges dropped. Uh, it, it's like a nightmare out of a novel, she said. These are hardworking people working for a trucking company. This is what they do for a living. Take this load from here to there. This is a good that has been legalized federally, and they are doing what their boss told them to do. You see, the article that I covered last time was about the fact that, uh, I think the Supreme Court is the ones that came out and said, you, or my, it might have been the EPA, FDA, one of them groups, I forget exactly who, uh, but had come out with a ruling saying, look, people are allowed to transport this through your state, whether or not your state has it legalized. You, you can't stop them from going from point A to point B if, if that line goes through your state and your state doesn't approve of it. That's not up to you. Anyway. A petition has been started which is demanding that all charges be dropped against the trio and that the government stop squandering tax dollars, locking people in cages for a plant they quite can quite literally do everything from save lives to run your car. As of Friday, the petition already had past 10,000 signatures. Uh, that was, when was this again? May 19th. So I, I don't know where, what the state of the petition is or these charges are now. This article came out prior to the other article that I spoke about. Um, so at that point, the ruling about it being uh, allowed to go through your state, whether or not your state approves, was not, was not in place. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. What else we got talking about here? Yep, deleted Skype, da, 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 dog do, da, 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 breakfast for dinner, da, da, da. Uh, Vinny, Vinny, yes, you're late, you're late for leftovers. <laughs> but welcome, <laughs> all the same. All right, we move on to RT.com, Russia Today, posted uh, 21st of May, so a little over a month ago. U.S. Navy wants to create an archive of 350 billion social media posts for, quote, research, unquote, purposes. Yeah, you are the research element. The U.S. Navy is seeking to create an archive that will store no less than 350 billion social media posts, no less than probably way more than, as part of the military branch's research efforts into modes, modes of collective expression. Wrap your mind around that phrase. Modes of collective expression. <laughs> Holy hell. All right. Uh, the, the, part of the Department of the Navy... Uh, has posted a solicitation asking contractors to bid on the, the project 
that would amass a staggering 350 billion social media posts dating all the way back to 2014 through 2016. So we're talking about already three years old and they want all that data from back then to do this modes of collective expression. Very odd, very interesting. Uh, the data will be taken from a single social media platform, but the solicitation does not specify which one. I'd guess Facebook, probably. Facebook is prob probably the one they're, they're targeting. I, I, I doubt they're, they're going to go after uh, Minds.com or something like that. Because, <laughs> you know, I'm pretty sure Minds.com was not around in 2016. Um, <laughs> so it could be Twitter, but yeah, it, it feels like a Facebook type thing. We seek to acquire a large scale global historical archive of social media data. You know, to me, on, on a level, on a, on a purely data scientist level, this sounds like an awesome job to do. But I would never do it, obviously, because I wouldn't want to assist people like this in any way. But just as a job to collect and uh, analyze and produce, reduce the data would be freaking great. <laughs> I, I, I just uh, such such fun stuff. Well, if you're a geek, if you're a data geek like I am, then yeah, that uh, right. It, it, it's that's just, it's just fun stuff. So just pour through this stuff and, and and create the algorithms that that extract the information that you're looking for. It, it's terrific. But uh, from a practical point of view, having uh, knowing that it's going to wind up in the hands of a government agency, the Navy in this case. No, no, I would never do that. Anyway, providing the full text of all public social media posts across all countries and languages covered by the social media platform. The contract synopsis reads, the Navy said that the archive would be used in ongoing research efforts. Well, what are you researching the public? Why are you researching the public? Into... The evolution of linguistic communities. Linguistic communities. The hell is that? And emerging modes of collective expression over time and across countries. Oh, this just sounds purely evil. The archive will draw from publicly available social media posts and no private communications or private user data will be included in the database. I suppose that's one small positive that they're not going to dig into your private user data, private communications, not like they couldn't if they wanted to. That information's all available. And I don't personally, I, I don't know why they don't just ask the NSA to provide it for them. Because the NSA has all this information. <laughs> Well, that's a <laughs> that, <laughs> sock puppet says he'd rather uh, build a workout bench for lesbians like recent uh, than tech out. Uh, I, I, yeah, I'll be on the testing uh, the uh, uh, testing end after you build that workbench, and and they yeah I'll never mind. <laughs> Anyway, the data must be collected from at least 200 million unique users. You know, I don't know that there's 200 million unique users on Facebook because they're pretty much all clones of one another. Or at least there's large groups of clones within, within groups. Uh, so unique users, that's kind of a stretch. In at least 100 countries, with no single country accounting for more than 30% of users. <sighs> anyway, while well, the stated intentions of the project sound benign, no, they don't. <laughs> the U.S. government has previously expressed interest in collecting social media data for more eyebrow-raising purposes. Last year, the Department of Homeland Security issued a notice asking contractors to bid on a database that tracks 290,000 global news sources 
in over 100 languages. The contract also mentioned the ability to keep tabs on influencers, uh, leading some reports to speculate that the proposed database could be used <laughs> to monitor journalists. Oh yeah, could be. Could be. <laughs> Yes, indeed, I will provide them with a, with any necessities. Uh. <laughs> oh, I, I don't know what what kind of stuff goes on over there on the planet or the uh, the the orb previously called a planet Pluto, um, but it might be a place to go because apparently. According to the or futurism dot com on May twenty first, twenty nineteen, here uh, scientists have said that Pluto may be hiding alien life in buried oceans. So if there's life over there, it could be a consideration. Japanese scientists say that the liquid water subsurface oceans on Pluto are kept from freezing over thanks to an insulating layer of gas hydrates. A discovery that could mean the distant dwarf planet and other inhospitable inhospit habitats could potentially harbor life. It's a dwarf. If, if Pluto's a dwarf, what's goofy? This could mean uh, there are more oceans in the universe than previously thought. Thought by who? Anyway, making the existence of extraterrestrial life more plausible. Sun Sunichi Kamakaka, lead author from the Hokkaido Industry University, uh, said in a statement, conventional wisdom, whatever that is, dictates that oceans found on a dwarf planet like Pluto should have technically frozen long ago. But according to the team's computer simulations, which go back, oh, 4.6 billion years, they have a really old computer. Wow. I, I didn't even know there was computers 4.6 billion years ago. Anyway, uh, ar around the time the formation of the solar system, these oceans would have no chance to ever freeze over. Hmm. The new study published in the journal Nature Geoscience this week found that it would only, only, quote, unquote, only, take one million years to freeze over without an insulating gas layer, but more than one billion years with one. On Pluto, such a subsurface ocean could still exist to this day thanks to the methane and nitrogen gas Methane, that means there's life, right? I just heard that about Mars. They found methane on Mars. That means there's cows farting on Mars. But now there's, if there's methane and nitrogen, both on Pluto, that means there's life there, right? Anyway, found in Pluto's atmosphere. Other icy moons could host, also host such subsurface oceans as well. Not to mention your moon, the moon of Earth, which I think is just called the moon. I don't think it has another name, although all the other moons that are called moons have names. This particular moon that is your main moon, main man moon, main moon and main, main, main man and the moon, <laughs> has no name. But uh, according to them, uh, they have also found a good subsurface ocean there on the moon, as well as a huge subsurface chunk of iron. Well, you would think so. Uh, sock puppet say you got it's got to be balls cold on Pluto, right? Uh, you you would think so, but they don't know. <laughs> we don't know that kind of stuff. <laughs> now this here, this next article, I do believe this is about Vincent Easley farting. It may not be about Vincent Easley farting, but it may be. On LiveScience.com, posted May 21st here by Brandon Spector. Scientists have created a sound so loud it can vaporize water on contact. And Beetle, I agree with you. These scientists have been smoking weed. And probably the really good stuff, too. 
uh, Rob Works says Luna, which I've heard some references to Luna uh, via, which Luna just means moon, um, as far as I know. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> All right. Anyway, scientists have discovered what they believe is the loudest possible underwater sound. I may have covered this on Freakers. I don't recall. A sound so powerful that it can vaporize water on contact. It's not the sound of a massive underwater earthquake, nor is it the sound of a pistol shrimp snapping its claws louder than a Pink Floyd concert. It is, in fact, the sound of a tiny water jet about the half the width of a human air being hit by an even thinner X-ray laser. Wow, that was loud, Vinny. <laughs> you can't actually hear the sound, SPD, because it was created in a vacuum chamber. That's probably for the best, considering that at around 270 decibels, these rumbling pressure waves are even louder than NASA's loudest ever rocket launch, which measured about 205 decibels. However, you can see the sounds, microscopically devastating effects in action, uh, also known as skid marks, uh, thanks to a series of ultra-slow motion video recorded at the SLAC National Accelerator Laboratory in Menlo Park, California. I watched this movie the other night. The hell was that called? Anyway, it was about a, uh, a accelerator kind of thing in Chicago that killed like everybody. Um, it was very interesting. Um, let, me, let, me, let me pull it up real quick here. I'll tell you what it was called. It was called I Still See You. It's available on Amazon Prime. It may be also available on Tubi. I'm not sure. All right. <laughs> Where was I? <laughs> Anyway, they made this really loud sound, and uh, it, it can vaporize water on contact, and um, you can't hear it. It's a really loud sound, and you can't hear it. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so anyway, check it out. I, I found an interesting article. Uh, there, there is um, some links here to like videos and such like that and uh, other other such interesting things and they do talk about the uh pink floyd in here so yeah um <laughs> i found it interesting that's the only reason i'm sharing it with you you can't well they can't hear you fart in a vacuum i guess it depends on what kind of vacuum it is is that is that like a hoover <laughs> kirby And the question here, too, is, does the vacuum trap the smell? I mean, if you farted into a, a, a vacuum tube, would that smell not just come right back out? <laughs> uh, even if you couldn't hear it. <laughs> All right. What are we doing here? What are we doing here? Uh, oh, here we are. MaryJane.com Mary as an M-E-R-R-Y not A-M-A-R-Y MaryJane.com posted May 15th here by Chris Moore You lucky Canucks, I tell ya Bunch of lucky Canucks Half a million Canadians are getting high at work According to a new report <laughs> The survey also found that a growing number of Canucks are choosing to buy weed legally instead of supporting the black market. Well, you know, I don't know if I believe that part because, you see, that sounds like nonsense. I've read many reports that that the, the legal weed uh, industry in Canada is so heavily regulated that people just don't want to deal with it. And they'd rather just keep on getting the weed that the, from the same guy they've been getting it from the last 20 years. So I'm not really buying it. So if that be the case, if that little thing there 
is a lie, is maybe not the other part also a lie? You decide. Ever since Canada federally legalized adult-use cannabis last October, a growing number of Canadians have been enjoying the freedom to smoke the sweet Chiba when and where they damn well please. But a new government study has reported that a growing number of Canadians are choosing to get high at work, raising concerns that some members of the workforce, members of the workforce, just humans, just regular folk, may be putting themselves or others in danger. No, not really. I mean, if you smoke weed on a regular daily basis, you know, you just it just makes you normal. It doesn't make you high. So, well, of course, it you know it keeps you relaxed and cooled out and stuff like that. But it it does not mess with your ability to do things. The most recent national cannabis survey. Uh, so that's a government thing, yeah, right. Uh, reports that an estimated five hundred and fourteen thousand Canadians are currently getting high before or during work based on data collected between the last quarter of 2018 and the first quarter of uh, this year. The survey notes that the that while the likelihood of engaging in this potentially dangerous behavior eh, did not differ by age or gender, and do you think they weren't getting high before you morons made it, quote, legal? <laughs> so it didn't differ by age or gender. It did vary uh, by by cannabis use frequency. Specifically, 27% of workers who reported using cannabis daily admitted that they got high before or during work. You know, I've had jobs before in the past many years, many, many years ago that if I did not get high before going to that job, I would not go to that job. <laughs> because some jobs are freaking horrible, and the only way that you can put up with those jobs is to be a little bit high while you're there. <laughs> now, of course, I wasn't, like, driving for a living or doing other things they think you become less reliable doing when you're high because, well, they think you're less reliable. I don't believe you're less reliable. I think you're more reliable smoking pot and then driving than not smoking pot and driving. I think you're a better driver when you're high. They disagree. They have guns. They have cages. They have jackbooted thugs. They got all these bad things to do to you when they disagree with you. I got really nothing to do to them when I disagree with them other than say, I disagree with you. <laughs> You're wrong. But no, 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 no. Anyway, statistics, <clears throat> excuse me, Statistics Canada has been conducting the National Cannabis Survey every three months for about a year. <laughs> all, all, that, all those years before that, yeah, nobody actually, actually got high before it was legal. Trust us, no... Until we legalized it, nobody got high. Anyway, in order to keep track of how legalization is changing Canadians' cannabis use, well, you don't really have a, a, a marker to say if it's changing due to legalization since you didn't test it before that. The most recent survey reports that 5.3 million Canadians aged 15 or older or 18% of the country's population, really, they've only got like 25 million people there, uh, reported getting high in the first three months of 2019. During the same time frame last year, before adult use was legal, only 14% of the survey respondents said they used cannabis. So, 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 <laughs> so after you legalized it, 4% 4, 4 more admitted to getting high. <laughs> Not 4% more got high, just 4% more admitted to it, 14 to 18%. Oh, it's so ridiculous. Anyway, 
I say you're better. You're better at tons of things when you're high than when you're not. Um, so, yeah, people who wanted to smoke pot did. Exactly, Rob. Uh, yeah, that's right. Some people are doing it because it's legal and it's trendy. <laughs> Uh, Vinny says, Arkansas is finally selling weed. He ain't buying it. A cost for a license, a license to buy weed <laughs> is high as hell. And so is the state of Arkansas if they think you're going to buy that license. Oh, God. <laughs> anyway, MaryJane.com. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm a little skeptical of the site after reading that article. Because this all sounds very much like government propaganda. But speaking of weed, on Reason.com, posted May 21st by Jacob Sellum, a sniff, a sniff by a pot detecting dog requires probable cause and does not justify a search. According to the Colorado Supreme Court, marijuana legalization changes the constitutional status of the canine olfactory inspections. Drug sniffing dogs in states that have legalized marijuana should be worried about their job security in light of a decision that the Colorado Supreme Court issued yesterday, confirming the 2017 judgment of a state appeals court, the justices said an alert by a dog trained to detect marijuana as well as other drug drugs no longer provides probable cause for a search in Colorado, where possessing an ounce or less of cannabis has been legal for adults 21 and older since 2012. Furthermore, the court ruled uh, in Colorado versus McKnight, deploying such a dog itself counts as a search and therefore requires probable cause to believe a crime has been committed and just possessing the weed is no longer a crime. The case involved McKnight, who in 2015 was pulled over by uh, in Craig, Colorado by Corporal Brian Gonzalez, ostensibly for failing to signal a turn. Gonzalez had been following McKnight because of behavior he deemed suspicious. He deemed, not that it was suspicious, he just said, yeah, I'm deeming that suspicious. He saw McKnight's pickup truck parked the wrong way in an alley. What? <laughs> parked the wrong way in an alley. Near an apartment. <laughs> As a man stood by the passenger door. Although Gonzalez saw no behavior consistent with an exchange or transaction, he followed the truck to a residence where police had found drugs almost two months earlier and it remained parked there for approximately 15 minutes, during which time no one left the house or the truck. When Gonzalez stopped McKnight, he recognized the passenger as someone who had used methamphetamine at some point in the past, but wasn't sure how recently. He recognized this driver out of all the people he deals with as someone, or the passenger, as someone who had used meth at some point, somewhere, in the past, not sure how recently. <laughs> Come on. Anyway, Gonzalez called Sergeant Cortland Folks of the Mofat County Sheriff's Office, who arrived with Kilo. The dog's name is Kilo. <laughs> A dog trained to bark when he smells marijuana. Yeah, and that's the only time he barks, right? Oh, marijuana, mass, cocaine, heroin, or MDMA. Kilo barked at the driver's door, prompting a search that discovered a pipe with meth residue in a storage compartment under the seat. After McKnight was convicted of possessing meth 
and drug paraphernalia. He appealed, arguing that Kilo's barking could not justify a search and that the police needed more evidence to use the dog in the first place. The Colorado Supreme Court agreed on both points, overturning his conviction. The U.S. Supreme Court, whose Fourth Amendment, whose Fourth Amendment reasoning uh, the Colorado Supreme Court has largely followed in applying the state's Constitution ban on unreasonable searches and seizures, has long maintained that an olfactory sweep by a drug-detecting dog, what if he had a hamburger in there and the dog was, the dog was hungry? Anyway, a drug-detecting dog does not count as a search because it reveals only the presence of contraband. And you know, they give those dogs a treat when they bark too. A fact that people have no legitimate privacy interest in concealing. The court has also held that the that such a dog's alert by itself is enough to justify a vehicle search, which um, requires probable cause, but not a warrant. So that was wrong. As the Colorado Supreme Court observed, neither of those assumptions holds true at, in Colorado anymore. Marijuana is not only decriminalized in, in Colorado, it's legalized, regulated, and most importantly, taxed. <laughs> the court said, furthermore, Colorado's legalization initiative uh, amended the state constitution to say that possessing an ounce or less of marijuana in public is not unlawful and shall not be an offense under Colorado law. Hence, cannabis consumers have a state constitutional right not, uh, not guaranteed by the federal constitution. So, yeah. So they're not allowed to just sniff you, send their dog to come and sniff you, unless they see some like crack laying on your, uh, on your, on your seat there or something. <laughs> All right. Last week or the week before, I forget which. I covered a story about the fact that that over there in. Uh, Sweden, Switzerland, Norway, one of those places over there. Um, I forget which it was, but one of those places over there, uh, they were doing a bunch of construction there and they were digging up ancient relics of the ancient Vikings that, that used to occupy that land. And they were taking those and destroying them. They weren't letting other people have them. They, they weren't processing them and, and, and putting them in a relic case somewhere. They were destroying them because, not what they said, but the real reason, because they want to destroy the history. They want to remove their own heritage. This article, which actually I do believe came out prior to that other article. I'm not positive of that, but here it is from May 22nd here on RT.com. Swedes up in arms as government moles potential ban on ancient, quote, Nazi, unquote, runes. Well, they're ancient, and the Nazis are not ancient. The runes have been around for millennia. Nazis, not so much. Now, the Nazis took some of the runes, the famous swastika you're all familiar with, for one, and used it for their own purposes. So they call them Nazi runes. It's not one of the Elder Futhark, uh, but uh, that, that's all right. The, the Swedish government is looking into the possibility of forbidding the use of Norse runes. Good luck with that, assholes. Local media has reported amid concerns that the ancient symbols have been misappropriated by neo-Nazi groups. So if, if I take, I don't know, whatever the favorite symbol of American patriotism, I guess that would be the flag, and I start using it to do some kind of nasty, hate-filled stuff with, does that mean you're going to prevent the use of the American flag at that point? Or what if I just use words 
in the in this alphabet that we all use for everything else. Words. Oh wait, lots of people use words and say hateful things with them. Why aren't you just banning what is this alphabet we use? The Roman alphabet, I think. Um yeah. So so what, what why aren't you banning the Roman alphabet? That alphabet's been used to create all kinds of hate. It's still being used to create hate. You guys are creating hate against the ancient Norse runes by saying because these neo-Nazis use some of these runes that these runes are no longer any good. You're out of your freaking mind. Justice Minister Morgan Johansson is currently investigating whether or not runes should be banned in Sweden as a way to deter hate groups. Well, they misappropriated the runes for their purpose. What makes you think they're not going to misappropriate whatever else is there available? Idiot, because they will. <laughs> now, why they decided to use the runes, I don't know. You'd have to ask one of them. Anyway, he was expected to make a recommendation uh, by the end of May, so I don't know what happened on that because this article does not have an update to it. If Johnson decides, but I think I would have heard about it. If Johansson decides to move forward with legislation prohibiting the runes, the ban could potentially encompass all Norse symbols, imagery, and traditional jewelry. And I just have to say a big F U to you. The proposal has enraged many Swedes and not and many not Swedes who see Norse runes as part of their shared history. Uh, for those who identify as pagan or heathen, no, maybe you don't identify as pagan or heathen. Maybe you identify as an Odinist or Asa True. Uh, may, maybe uh, you just like having the history as it was. The potential ban has been interpreted as an assault on freedom of religion, which is guaranteed under the Swedish constitution. The Nordic Asa community, the largest heathen, they keep calling them heathens here, because I guess to a, cat, to a Christian you're a heathen, if you're not a Christian. Uh, anyway, the largest heathen religious group in Sweden has spoken out against anti-government efforts to police Sweden's ancient heritage arguing that the prejudices and misunderstandings are best cured with the knowledge and facts. So what if these neo-Nazis start taking uh, uh, Jewish stars or uh, uh, Christian crosses and start using those as their, their new hate speech symbols? Are you going to ban those? <laughs> The religious organization has warned that banning Norse runes in Sweden's in Sweden would wipe out a part of their own history, culture, and beliefs, and our freedom of expression. Go straight to hell, you governmental ass wipes! All right, moving on. This uh, next story is probably a shock to two people in the chat. Not two people currently in the chat. Two people that commonly visit the chat. <laughs> it's probably a shock to them because, well, they're on that side of it. <laughs> from from the mindunleashed.com, May 23rd, by Tyler Durden. So I, I, I think this actually came from Zero Hedge. But it's uh, over here on themindunleashed.com. The world is getting increasingly dumber, study finds. You needed a study for that? <laughs> and just like that, another sign of the idiocracy. Oh, apocalypse has emerged. Western Europe is home to a cluster of developed economies that boosts some of the highest standards of living in the world. But that could soon change, because as e Evan Horowitz writes on NBC News, uh, think vertical IQ scores, whatever that is, in France, Scandinavia, Britain, Germany, and even Australia are beginning to decline. 
A trend has been well documented across Western Europe and could soon carry over to the U.S. as well. Oh, believe you me, it's here. Which means that the, the data have confirmed what millions of Americans who have watched cable news, not helping at all watching the cable news, or logged on to Twitter over the past three years probably already suspected. The world is getting dumber. <laughs> and just like that, another sign of the idiocracy apocalypse has emerged. Though, unlike the movie, which posits the population of Earth will become steadily dumber as stupid people outbreed the more intelligent compatriots, the cause of the trend in Europe has yet to be determined because even the children of relatively intelligent Europeans are getting dumber. Well, you want me to point out a few reasons that they're getting dumber? Well, we can go back to that TV thing that I had mentioned earlier. Yeah, uh, that'd be one of them. But then you got your fluoride. Heavy use of fluoride. Oh, you got your chemtrails. Yes, yes, indeed. Oh, you got the vaccines and all the adjuvants that are put into those. Oh, you got the foods that's got a bunch of nasty-ass poisons in those. You got poisons in the water. You got poisons in the air. All designed to dumb people down. And do other things also. Yes, make you less potent if you're a male. Or, or less fertile if you're a female. Yeah, they, they don't want you breeding. And they don't want you thinking. They want you stupid, docile, and impotent. <laughs> so there's, there's no shock or surprise here on this article. Um... Yeah, it's T. Uh, Rob works says TV is geared for eight year olds, uh, but it, and it basically is. But it's also geared to make those eight year olds stupider, or uh, less able to ask questions about their surroundings or what they're being taught or told. So yeah. Anyway, there's that. Where are we at here? Okay, uh, offthegridnews.com. Test your garden soil with this easy do-it-yourself kit. Yep, so uh, if you're new to gardening, testing your soil might seem difficult. You could purchase a soil pH testing kit from a nursery or garden center, but they often come with a big price tag, and they are not always reliable. Another app option is to have your local cooperation extension Cooperative extension, test your soil for pH levels and nutrients. Always very, analysis is very helpful because, and I, need, I didn't test my soil this year. I need to do this next year. Anyway, if you don't have the time or money, consider making your own soil pH testing kit from scratch. The Guru Magazine recommends using a simple method for checking your soil. Here's what you need. Two glass jars, a measuring cup, vinegar, water, baking soda. I'll bet you almost everybody listening to this has all those items. And the directions are simple. Scoop out a quarter cup of soil from your garden and put it in a glass jar. Add a quarter cup of vinegar to the soil in your jar. The vinegar may or may not fizz. If the mixture fizzes, your garden soil pH is alkaline. But if the mixture doesn't fizz, go to step three. Step three, get another sample. Take a quarter cup of soil from your garden, put it into another jar. Add a half a cup of water to the soil sample and mix. Add baking water. Add a half, uh, add, add a, half a cup of bake, uh, baking soda. Baking soda? Baking soda. Yes, that's what it says here. Um, baking soda to the soil mixture. If the mixture f fizzes, the soil is acidic. If your soil didn't react to the vinegar or baking soda, then the soil is probably already pH balanced. Congratulations, you can start planting. And then it talks about the plants that like alkaline, the plants that like acidic, uh, and uh, other most uh, good plants that like pH balanced soils, and ways to fertilize cheap, cheap uses of ch cheaply fertilize your your soil. So check that out. Great stuff, great information. This, these links will all be in the post-show blog, which will be up shortly. This next article, I'm just going to give you basically the headline. I do believe I talked about this on on the Freakers Ball, um, but I, I think it's a great thing. And it's something 
that you can also do it yourself, in a way. From WCVB.com, a subtelevision station, felt like I was tripping on LSD, man. Repairman accidentally dosed while repairing hippie era, hippie era synthesizer. So it talks about different things in here um, that there was some drugs maybe involved. Uh, but you could you could get that effect from actual audio frequencies, uh, which you, this article doesn't really cover. But you could use certain audio frequencies. Uh, I think if you go on YouTube, you'll be able to find uh, some videos that give you that um, that kind of effect. So uh, yeah, check it out. Uh, anyway, that's gonna wrap it up here on the. Oh, I didn't un undo that one. Uh, that's gonna wrap it up here on. Grim Leftovers for this week. I'll be back next week with another episode. Same time, same place. So be sure and tune in next week for that as well. And uh, we, I, I will be glad to have you along with me. And we'll, they'll all like you here in the chat too. Um, now, just a mere six hours from now, which will be midnight my time or 2 a.m. Eastern time, will be Flash Somebody doing his show, which is going to be at 8 a.m. his time over there in Denmark. <laughs> in a perfect world. So yeah, that comes on at midnight, my time, but like I said, 2 a.m. For, for you East Coasters. So uh, yeah, you might want to tune in for that. Anyway, check it out. In a perfect world, Flash Somebody. Tomorrow, Grammy will be back on her normal scheduled time which is 7 p.m. Eastern with Grammy's Rocket Chair. So uh, check the schedule over on reallibertymedia.com Real for the rest of the shows that are here on RLM Radio. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I appreciate it tremendously. Talk to you later. Peace.